Hey, Paul and Lucas here. You saw the Kanban video we put together. Well, Lucas has gone to a whole nother level. He's put together this video, which is a deep dive into barcodes and QR codes. It took him hours and hours of work so you could learn how we're doing here at FastCap. We're entitling this video, Lucas's gift to you. And it's not even Christmas. I made a video with Paul recently on how we do Kanban cards. And we got some questions on the barcodes that we're using. So I want to explain to you how a barcode works. So in my computer here, we use an inventory control system and it's called WASP. Oh, and what is WASP? WASP is just our inventory control system. It's a computer system. And what we use it for is it stores the location of every pallet and what item is on that pallet in all of our racking here. The other thing it does is it stores the date at which we received that pallet so we can pull them out in the right order. Everything else for inventory is managed with the Kanban card. So if I want to pull out a pallet of an item, I have a list here that lists every pallet I have in my inventory. There's a search function on it. So before barcodes, I would get my water spider Kanban and it would tell me that I need a pallet of SB2124SS. So what I would do is I would go in my search function, I would take both hands and I would type exactly what it says, SB hyphen 21X 24 SS. And then I would hit enter to search. When I do that, it'll pull up all the pallets of that item that I have. And I have different things here that I can sort by. So we sort by date acquired. So the one on the top of the list is always the oldest pallet and that's the one that I should pull out. Now, that's how most people would do it. It's not a horrible way to do it, but in order to save a couple seconds, and more importantly, to mistake-proof this process, we use barcodes. So with the barcode, this barcode is just a font, and it says exactly this, SB2124SS. So with the barcode, when I'm back in my search bar here, instead of having to type the entire thing, SB2124SS, all I have to do is take my scanner here, and when I dink the barcode, it types for me. And so you can see right here, SB2124SS. I didn't have to touch a single key, and it's all in there. And it takes me, when I hit search, to exactly the same place. So it makes it so I can't type it wrong, and I don't have to use both hands and type. All I need to do is scan once with one hand. So that's the advantage of the bar. So if you want to start using barcodes, I'm going to teach you how to do it. I'm going to start with the most basics and we'll work our way up in complication as we go. So if you already know what I'm talking about, feel free to skip forward a little bit. So first of all, as I said a minute ago, a barcode is just a font. So I'm here in Excel and I can type anything I want in this box, such as make a barcode. Right now I'm in some weird font I've never heard of, but I can change this font to anything in my font list whether I want Franklin Gothic, or whether I want something I can barely read, or whether I want a barcode, which I definitely cannot read. But in a barcode, each one of these sets of lines and spaces actually represents a letter, and each set of lines and spaces is different. So if I want to, at the end of this, put another character like an F, you can see it just adds the set of lines and spaces for an F. So, in order to make a barcode, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download a barcode font because they don't come pre-installed in Microsoft Office. So let's show you how to do that first. So if you come over to this screen, I have found... These always change which ones are available for free that work well. Um, what you want is called a Code 3 of 9 or Code 39. Uh, barcode font. There's different types of barcode fonts, just like there's hundreds of different fonts in your Excel. Um, three of nine is the best one for you to use in America. Uh, there's, you know, different Chinese barcodes where the set of lines is different, um, but what you want is a three of nine. So I found this website right now. It's called Inflow. So it's www.inflowinventory.com. And on there, there's a free download. Scroll down right here, download the free barcode font here. So if you click on a download, it should download a zipped folder into your PC. Then what you can do is you want to go start and go to your control panel and click on fonts. Once you got fonts open, you're going to want to go to explorer and open up your downloads folder where the font should have been downloaded. So in your download folder, it usually downloads the fonts as a zip folder. So the first thing you need to do is you need to unzip it 
Um, you should just be able to right click and in most Windows applications and unzippers built in, what you want is to extract all. So I'm gonna click extract all, ask me where I want to extract it to. I'm just gonna go straight into the same downloads folder and hit extract. So once you've unzipped it, you're gonna to wanna to open up that folder and depending on where you downloaded it from, you might have to go into another folder. For me, it's another one here called fonts. And in there, I have the two actual fonts. So you can select both of those and then you can drag them into the fonts folder in the control panel. When you drop, it's gonna install the fonts. So you'll wait for the bar to go. Now your fonts are installed and you can see free three of nine right here. Once that's done, you can close control panel, close your downloads, and then when you go into Excel, you should, in your drop-down list, be able to find that font under the name that it downloaded under. So I am under free three of nine right here. And so if you click on that, that will give you a barcode. And so as we already covered, this barcode is just a font. So it just says, make a barcode. But if I put it in my free three of nine format, then I can print out a page and it'll print me out a barcode. So now I printed it out, I have a barcode here. If I go though to dink this barcode in, you'll notice that when I put it under the scanner, it won't actually dink in. So the way it works is for a barcode to actually work, instead of just the text, what you need to do is you need to change it and you need it to have an asterisk or a star at the beginning and at the end of what you type. The star tells the scanner where to start and where to stop scanning the barcode. Without a star on either end, it will not scan. So now that I put a star at the beginning and end, if I change this back to my free three of nine font and then I print again, now it'll actually work. All right, so here's my new barcode now. This says star, make a barcode star. So now if I click on a new cell in Excel here and I put this under my scanner, then it'll dink it in and you can see the cell I was selected on, it says make a barcode because that's what I had typed in that barcode. When you dink it in, it will not display the stars. The stars are just for the scanner to know where to stop and start, uh, start and stop reading. So you need the stars on either end of your barcode, but when you scan it in, it's going to scan in just the text between the two stars. Okay? So there's your basic for how to make a barcode. It's star, whatever you want to type, star, and you put it in your free three of nine font. Now, you might notice that when I downloaded my fonts here, there's actually two fonts in the folder I downloaded. One is called free three of nine. The other is free three of nine X. That X stands for extended. So back when barcodes were first made up, the three of nine only had 39 possible characters in it. So the alphabet, number zero through nine, and a couple very basic special characters. They've now added a lot of the special characters that you might actually want to use, such as a backslash or a hyphen, and those are all included in your free three of nine extended. So if I want to use a barcode that has anything besides just numbers and letters, instead of the free three of nine, I actually want to use the one that for me it came in right below it doesn't say anything until I hover over it but free three of nine extended and it looks just like a barcode so that will allow you to use your special character. Now that we've covered the basics of how you make a barcode I'm going to show you how we use Excel to make making barcodes easy for us here at FastCat. So in Excel you can use simple formulas in cells to tell the cell what it equals. So if I want to type something in the top cell my barcode it'll say that there now if i want the cell below to say the same thing i can select that cell and i go up to the formulas bar here and i say that cell equals and i can just click on cell one now i'm saying that this cell is always equal to this cell so whatever i put here is always going to show up here enter so now anything i type in this top cell will automatically display in the bottom cell. So then I can take this bottom cell and I can change the font to my free three of nine extended. Now, whatever I type in this top cell is gonna display in the bottom cell in barcode. Oh, 
updates automatically. Now if I print this page, it'll always tell me what I typed and it'll have it as a barcode so I can dink that in to any inventory system, computer, anything like that. But as we already covered, if I print this as it is right now, it's not actually gonna dink in because it just says barcode. What I can do if I want is I can type on every one of them, whatever I wanna type with a star at the beginning and the end. Then when I print it out though, everything that's displayed is displayed with the star and that's extra typing, that's wasteful. So what we do here at FastCap to make it easy is we take the stars out of there and we update the formula down here. So where it says equals A1, I'm gonna add some things in there. So now I'm gonna say equals, I'm gonna do quotation mark, star, quotation mark. So that means star. And then I put the ampersand or the and symbol, A1. And then I put the ampersand again. And then again, quotation, star, quotation. Enter. Now, whatever I type here, this is going to display it in a readable barcode because it's gonna add in the star at the beginning and the end of whatever I display. Just like that. And then if I have it in my code three of nine extended font, when I print it out, it'll actually dink in. So here's what I just printed out, my display, and then the barcode that says star display star in barcode font. So now if I put this under my scanner, it'll dink in and where I dinked it in, it just says display. In order to implement barcodes, um, at FastCap when we started using them, we already had a bunch of these external Kanban cards made and we wanted them to have barcodes on them so that we could scan them in. So in order to do that, we made an Excel here and we formatted the size properly to print out on our label printer. So what we have is we have a space here where I can type anything I want, say Amazon shipper box. Updates the barcode to say that. And then when I print, can print on my label printer, comes out right here on a sticky label. And then I can stick this onto the external Kanban cards I already have, and now they're scannable. I'll show you. If I go into a new Excel here, take this guy I just printed, dink, and it says Amazon shipper box. So while that works great for updating combo cards that you already have that are handwritten and just adding a barcode onto them, at FastCab we're always making new Kanban cards. And so to eliminate the overprocessing of printing out a Kanban card and then making a label, printing it out and sticking it on, we've just incorporated the barcode into the Kanban card. So all of our Kanban cards, we laid out the for, uh, format of them in Excel. So you can see these four here all fit on the first page and then the back page has the back of each Kanban card. And so when I go to make a Kanban card, I have the barcode with my formula in it right there. So when I wanna type a part number up here, Accuscribe Pro, for example, it updates the barcode automatically. Then when I print it out, all my Kanban cards come out with a barcode on it that I can just dink into my inventory control system when I wanna pull that item out. All right, so now here's where it gets a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna to talk to you about carriage returns and tabs. A carriage return is an enter keystroke. So on your scanner, here at FastCap we use these Honeywell scanners, but pretty much all scanners work about the same. When you get the scanner, there is a book of different settings that you can change on the scanner by scanning different barcodes. Let me show you. All right, so to set up our scanner, there's a couple things. We've just gone online to download the manual, downloaded it and printed out the things that we want to use. So the first thing we do is we want it to read all the special characters. So we, ours did not come with this turned on. So we have the barcode here to turn on the full ASCII. That means it'll read the full set of characters. So when I first buy a new scanner, first I scan that. Then I also have another one here that I scan to leave the scanner always on so that when it's in a little stand here, it'll dink when I just put a barcode under it. I don't have to push the button. And then the next thing that we do is we add a carriage return at the end of each scan. Uh, we actually don't do this anymore, but if you do do this, the keyboard will hit the enter key after everything you scan. So what that means is that if I take this Kanban card 
that says star blue dog star and I scan it under my scanner with carriage return on it hits enter and it takes me down to the next cell now this scanner I don't have the carriage return turned on so this is that same Kanban card and if I dink it in on this scanner you can see I'm still in that same cell and the cursor is still flashing so then I can hit enter or tab to get to either the cell down or tab to get to the cell over. Now this is important for you because depending on your system, you may or may want not want to use carriage returns. But the important thing to know is that you can actually build a carriage return into the barcode too. So you can have carriage return off on the scanner, but you can have it hit enter as part of your barcode. You can also have it hit tab. So let me show you how to do that. So with my Kanban card here that said blue dog, let's say that I want it to hit tab after this, and I'll show you why that would be nice in a minute. So what I'm gonna do is what I wanna type in to make it hit tab is I'm gonna say blue dog, and then I'm gonna put the dollar sign and the capital letter I with no space in between the two. That reads in the barcode as tab. So if I print that out, and replace it on this card. I'll show you here. Then when I go back where I was here and I dink this in again, same scanner, it brings me to the next cell over to the right. Now that can be helpful because if I want to use my Kanban cards for ordering and I want to type an email that says I want to order this and this quantity, this and this quantity, this and this quantity, etc. What I can do is I can put the dollar sign I at the end of every one of my part numbers and then on all of my quantities that I want to order. So for this one, it's going to be 500. I can put a carriage return. A carriage return is a dollar sign and a capital letter M. So if I put 500 dollar sign M like that, that's going to put enter at the end of it. So if I print that one out and stick it on my card, I'll show you. Now if I go in to type an email or make a spreadsheet that has everything I want to order, I can take my Kanban card, I have another one here I set up the same way so I can show you, and now, blank screen, and I want to place an order, all I have to do is dink the part number and it tabs, and then I dink the quantity and it hits enter, and dink the part number and it tabs, and dink the quantity and it hits enter, and see how that fills that in exactly in the format I want it to be in. So you can play with dollar signs and tab, uh, um, dollar sign I's and dollar sign M's, tabs and carriage returns to make these barcodes work for you in the most efficient way. Also, you'll remember I showed you that formula where we put the stars on everything. You can do that in Excel for your dollar signs and your tabs as well. So if you want to have a barcode here, and we'll just erase this stuff so I can show you. If I want to put a barcode here to print out, that says blue dog and it's always going to be a barcode that scans and has a tab at the end of it what i'm going to do is i'm going to say this cell equals quotation star quotation and sign cell a1 and sign quotation dollar sign i that's my tab quotation and sign quotation star quotation enter now anything i type in this top cell is going to type down here with a star at the beginning and the end and a dollar sign i before the last star if i put that into my barcode font i can print this page out and it will scan in and it will scan blue dog and it'll tap so that's how you do that so now that you've learned that, you can understand how we did all of the systems that you saw in the Kanban video. So this right here, this Excel, this is our pallet label. So for our pallet label, we have two pieces of information. One thing is the quantity and one thing is the part number. So I can type in my quantity. Let's say I got 500 things that came in on a pallet. And for my part number, let's say that they are Accuscribe Pro. Once I fill those in, it automatically generates the barcodes for both things. And then we actually have it copy. These are just the same formulas and rotate it 90 degrees so that we get two labels. I'll show you why and how that works in a second. So then when I got my pallet in, I can print this out. I print it on my label printer and spits me out a sticker. 
and then I can put this sticker on my pallet so when I go put it in the racking, it's easy to receive. Let's go see. So we've formatted this so it fits on a UPS shipping label, and so that's why we have these copied and rotated. So when I have a pallet, I type that once, I get two stickers. This one goes on the top of the pallet, this one goes on the bottom of the pallet. The reason for that is that when I drive down here in the forklift and I want to receive these things in, if the pallet's on the second level up, it's very easy for me to scan the big label on the bottom. But if the pallet's on the floor, it's hard for me to reach all the way down there out of the forklift. So I like these little barcodes up high so I can scan these. And then every rack location we have, we put a barcode on those too. So you can see this is rack location aisle four, 145 down. Floor location one, second pallet over, two. And then this barcode says exactly that, star 0041512. So when I want to receive a pallet, I'm going to scan AccuScribe Pro, scan the location where I put it, and then I scan the quantity of how many I put there, and then I can add it into the system. And I'll show you where we got really cool with barcodes on how that works next. So now that you've learned how we do everything, I'll show you the culmination of the coolest thing that we've figured out with barcodes. So in my inventory control system, when I want to add a pallet, I take my scanner. Now, as I said, I'm going to scan the part number, dink. I'm going to scan the location I put it in, dink. And then I'm going to scan the quantity that I put there, dink. Now, if you look at my screen here, there's a number of other fields of information that we don't need to fill in. But in order to get to hitting add, you can hit tab, 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 enter, tab, and there you go. So that's a series of tabs, enters, stuff like that, and it gets us back to where we're ready to enter another pallet. So as opposed to having to do those three dinks and then take the mouse and come and hit the add button physically on the screen, we've actually created a barcode here. You can see it right here. It says add and it has a barcode. And this barcode is tab, 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 enter, tab. And so when I wanna add my pallet, what I can do is I can do part number, location, quantity, and then I just dink add. And it did all of those tabs and enters for me, no mouse touches at all. There you go. All right, so overview of everything you just learned. One, a barcode is just a font. You can download a, a barcode font and you can use it in Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, anything like that. Two, in order to get the barcode to scan, you need a star at the beginning and the end of what you type. To put the star there, it's very easy to use Excel and create a formula so anything you type in one cell copies as a barcode and the cell below it that you can print and it will scan. Three, scanners come with different options. First, you need ASCII on in order to read special characters and you need to be using a code three of nine extended font to have the special characters read in. Four, your scanner can do a carriage return on everything it dinks or you can create a carriage return or a tab as part of the barcode by using dollar sign M for a carriage return or dollar sign I for a tab. There's one thing you need to know, which is that barcodes do have limits. The technical limit for a barcode is the maximum size is 6.5 inches and the maximum number of characters is 48 characters, 48 characters. Now, I never go that big because when you're that big with that many characters, it's really hard to get a scanner to read it. If you have a really good printer and a really good scanner, so you're getting great resolution on your print and the scanner is really good, maybe. I try to limit them to at most about 20 characters so they scan easily. So if you have something like a YouTube link and you want to make a barcode for your YouTube link, that's way more than 20 characters. When I put that in, See, it makes, I have this auto size to this cell, so it makes it shrink down to fit the cell. All those lines are so tightly spaced that when I go to print that and try to scan it, my scanner is not going to have the resolution to read that. And so in order to store more information and still have it be able to be scanned, that's when we use QR codes. So let me show you how a QR code works. All right, so I'm not an expert on QR codes, but one thing I'll teach you is that unlike a barcode, a QR code is not just a font. A QR code is a box and it has different sets of filled in and blank spaces inside the square that store the information. So if you have something long, like a YouTube link, and you wanna create a QR code, what we use here at FastCap is a free app called Epson iLabel. It's this one right here. You can download that on any device. And when you open Epson iLabel, it will create a QR code for you. There's lots of QR code creators. This is just the one that we use that we found to be simple. 
So if I want to create a QR code, I click there and then I can paste my YouTube link right there. When I hit done, it takes me back and now it's created a QR code. This QR code has all the data of all those characters stored in it. So now when I print it out and we use these Epson LW600P QR code printers and it actually prints it as a sticker so I can stick this on anything I want. And this, this serves the same- this is also a label printer as well. Yes, it is. But this saves the, serves the same exact function as a barcode, only all the data is stored in a lot smaller space. So if I take this over to my scanner, it will very easily and quickly read all of that information just like that. Wow. There's my whole YouTube link. Very cool. Yep. And I learned something new. I didn't know the scanner would read a QR code. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wow, fantastic. If you want to try to get further into it, there's probably more to learn. That's everything I know. Google's a great resource for more information. But hopefully this video was informative, and I helped you figure out how to do some barcodes to save your company some time. Thanks.